opened the NZZ, Swiss newspaper, and that was my ad of the year. Uh, so I, I thought, hey, I make a photograph of that. Huh? So some kind of 15 second pass, huh? I shot that picture. And then I began to count. I counted to 75, then I added my 15 seconds. Uh, so I had a 90 second ad. Uh, so I was more sure that I didn't write some stupid stuff. Huh? <laughs> so a 90 second ad. Versus, I mean, ads usually, you know, um, turned subliminal or in a, in, a, in a fraction of a second. So, uh, um, then I was uh, obviously interested uh, what kind of guy he was, because at, at landing, you see what kind of phone they activate. And what was it? A Blackberry. Uh, so here, somebody owns a Blackberry, invested 90 seconds uh, in, in reading. An ad. And then I, I thought also uh, interesting that uh, a company that believes in digital entertainment these days, yeah, and the whole world talks about how important it is to have digital communication, believes in old fashioned um, uh, media, like a newspaper. Yeah? And actually, this campaign ran about over a year, and I saw it in many markets. So. I, I think that should be also a message to us. But on the other hand, that such an ad has no chance to win an ad in a award show. It's not a problem. Yeah? But the problem is, it sort of works in our focus when we do ads. You know, We want to win awards. Now we have such an ad, and the creative director looks at it and said, you know, you're not going to show that to the client. This is a damn uh, simple ad has nothing to it. It doesn't have an ad, ad line you've never read before yeah, or a visual you've never seen before. So in order of leading quality, it is very important that we are sane in our head yeah, and, and have, the, have the point of view what might make the best communication uh, all the time. And, and, and you know, I mean, it's, it's just at the beginning of the whole thing, a bit of a warning. Uh, so we agreed to talk about uh, leading quality uh, and having a strategy for it. Now, let me tell you my strategy uh, for a long time, and I'm more and more convinced <coughs> that this is a good strategy. Uh, is inspiration, to give inspiration, to create inspiration for chosen people. What, what does it mean? First of all, inspiration, when we look at things, when we judge things, when we work out things, these pieces should inspire others, should add something to the people's lives. So should the products, and so should the brand. So we are, in a way, in the business of inspiring people. Inspiring people, not consumers. Uh, nobody wakes up as a consumer of something. You know, we are people with our lives. But this actually uh, is more and more clear to everybody. Uh, and we kind of moved out of that, you know, uh, one road, uh, shuffle things over people's head. But it's very important to also understand the people in their lives if we want to inspire them. And therefore, I have the, word, the, 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 the idea of chosen people. And chosen people, um, uh, when we think about the briefs we get, uh, they are usually based on demographics. But they are not so much based or intelligently based on psychographics. Uh, to, to give you an idea about what I mean with uh, psychographic uh, 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 audience, um, think about BMW driver, person that drives. Anybody drives a BMW in the room? What was that gold line? Uh, soon, soon you'll drive one, perhaps. Huh? <laughs> um, uh, what kind of what psyche? Is this this uh, person involved? What? 
how, how does the person drive? Confidently. Hmm? Yeah. Confidently? What else? A little bit more like a race car driver. A little bit more like a race car. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, uh, racing, racing in the faster? Racing in, in, yeah. in, in, in traffic? Yeah. What does yeah. that mean? In and out. In and out? Sliding in and out of Okay. Cars. And and what does it mean, in and out? What, what, what is he like, doing? Or she? Not going what? Like cutting around people. Cutting around? To get to the front. To the front, yeah? Yeah. So. Arrogant. Arrogant, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, cutting around to the front <laughs> actually unleashes the idea. Because what happens in, in, in the street, on, on which lane is he lane. using? Yeah. On the left lane. Yeah. In the 60s, Paul Hahnemann, you, you had a great party tonight? <laughs> so you want some water? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm okay, I'm just really, I'm sorry if I am. Oh, a little time, yeah. I will not wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. So, um, Paul Hahnemann, the CEO of BMW, in the 60s, the, the, the brand was al almost at the distinction. Uh, so they, they, they <coughs> had the discussion, should we continue on it? He gave this psychographic direction for the company. And he said, my car drives on the overhaul lane. I want to have people in the car uh, that have further goals versus a Mercedes. A Mercedes then the direction to, to um, uh, the engineers was also when a Mercedes driver looks in the rear view mirror, the signal must be I better stay on the right side because there is a guy that wants to pass me. You know? So it is this psychographic attitude you cannot be behind somebody else. It angers you. You've got to overtake uh, the, the person. So now, that is a very simple thing uh, in order to nail this. And then when you do the communication, in Germany, then it became as Freude am Fahren, which means uh, with fun, driving with fun. So it was a little bit more modest in the United States. It was the ultimate driving machine. So it was a little bit more with a push. But you know, th this is uh, also important. Then you know what the kind of culture of a company is and what, what um, uh, leadership has to uh, decide in certain situations. When they discuss, should BMW be in um, uh, the Formula One or should they go out? Yeah? because of environmental issues and all this kind of stuff, they decided to go out. But as long as the competition is in there, you don't do that, in my opinion. Yeah? So, um, now this person yeah, that constantly has to overhaul others, let's say, that was the first baby in their family. What kind of car now uh, 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 enters the head as with some relevance. Volvo. Volvo. Yeah? Bingo. Volvo, safe, direction to the engineers, always look a little bit yeah, like a tank uh, when you build it. Yeah? And then when the advertising is really well communicating, it's directed to fathers usually and, and hits on the responsibility. And uh, so that is where those stories are. So that is chosen people, uh, watch the brief uh, to, to really be able to actually give the target a name, you know, like uh, uh, soccer moms uh, in, in the car business again, the minivan was designed for soccer moms. You know, they had once a week, they had to collect the kids and had to go to a soccer field, you know, and, and they needed a different car, and the car was not available. Maybe there was a Range Rover here and there riding around in the United States. But then Chrysler saw this, designed the soccer mom car, and changed, I mean, the whole landscape on the road. Uh, now, 
about 50% are SUVs, and that it started with the minivan in, in the United States. So I have a lot of other examples. Uh, maybe later in the discussion, if you want to know another one, I will let you know. So we're talking about leading quality. And uh, when, when I uh, took the job at Leo Burnett, suddenly I had uh, to lead the quality around the world. <coughs> At, at the first time without the United States, later with the United States. Um, so when we discussed work, so how do you like it? Yeah? I mean, very often the word great came. So what do you mean with great? Yeah? Well, I mean, it's very good. Yeah? So why is it very good? Yeah, well, it has this and that. So it's it's very good. No, it's maybe it's maybe it's okay. So it was a kind of diffuse thing in talking about ads. And actually, when 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 I um, moved to Chicago uh, as a German guy, having done some some good campaigns and having been been built uh, having built with some partners a couple of agencies, I and mean, we started TPWA at a certain point of time, so at, uh, TPWA, and then we had our own shop, which we merged with Leo Burnett. Um, I asked for the job description, yeah? and the chief creative officer at the time said in Chicago, if you need a job description, uh, then you should not be the president of our company and, and its creative, uh, chief creative officer. And I was kind of swallowing, said, gee, that, that is a nice welcome here in Chicago. Uh, and, but then I immediately said, OK, then you get some German engineering and advertising. No? OK. Well, he said, that's fine with me. So it's, now let's talk about German engineering and advertising. When we look at work, we should have clear criteria. And over time, we came up with those 10 quality criteria. And you see there are three brackets. When you look at work, you also want to check if it has qualities you don't want. You should check, has it qualities that you want to go for? And then you have to have some qualities to get there and to avoid uh, work. Now, when you think about it and your work, what kind of qualities would you put on that list? Let's say the 10 is the most desired quality, and the 1 is the least desired quality, and something in between. Can you spontaneously say some qualities that come to your mind when you look at work? What are you Relevant. looking at? What? What? Relevance. Relevance. Selling the product. What? Selling the product? Originality. Which one? Originality. Originality. Freshness. What? Freshness. Freshness. Problem solving. Problem solving. Changes the world. Changes the world. Well, acting ideas. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Craft. Craft. Very yeah, good. Simplicity. Simplicity. Memorable. Yeah. Memorable. Okay. These are all very relevant and good criteria. Here's what we came up with, and when we did that, it actually had to be culture neutral client neutral, it had to be able to be used around the world so that nobody could say, you know, that doesn't make sense for me. Yeah. When we had to deal with Procter & Gamble, it had to make sense for Procter & Gamble. When we dealt with Heinz work, it had to make uh, 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 sense for that. So, quickly, and then we will work a little bit with, with that scale. On the four, we put the cliché. When you look at work, you know, uh, actually maybe 80% of the stuff you look at is somewhat a cliché. Uh, it's adapted from something else. There's no originality, what do you say? And uh, you don't want to have the cliché. Yeah? We, we are in the business of making a difference uh, of differentiation. What's worse than the cliché is if the work is not competitive. Now, when you work in a category, you know where, who the competitors are. Then you put your work next to it, your thought next to the thoughts of the others, and then you quickly can, can uh, have an idea 
if it's competitive or not. Um, what's even worse is when the work is done in a yeah, destructive way. Yeah? Bad casting, bad layout, um, uh, uh, no simplicity, convoluted, and, and, and so forth. And what is even worse, if the work is appalling, we said, yeah? but very much also in a human sense. You know, you, you can, can have the idea that the most human brand can be the market leader, but in the drive for creativity, we are very often uh, also on the edge to say, okay, let's provoke something, and if we provoke humanity, um, I have to be careful with that. Huh? Um, now, let's go up. At an eight, the, the, the place where we wanted to be with our communication was we want to set a new standard in the category. And you know, if you negotiate that with a client up front, do we want to set a new standard in the category? I think uh, uh, the, the, the floor for, for the work is more favorable for ideas that are off the norm. Because only ideas that are off the norm, they can set a new standard. Now, over time then, the company, the brand, the product, will own something the others don't have. And the, the more you, you do your communication, the more that will be relevant. Now we also know that brands, let's say, don't just live in categories. If we can set a new standard in communication, the same thing happens. Yeah? We also can own something there. If it comes together, then you might create product integrity and brand charisma with those two. And if you just, for instance, take Dove, yeah? Dove, they did set a new standard in the category. And the way they communicated, they also set a new standard. Yeah? So nobody, I mean, the cliche then, you know, works in to something similar. But I think uh, they have achieved, at least at the time they did it, I mean, some clear, cut uh, differentiation in, in this uh, kind of market. And then coming back to inspiration and also the challenge, we have to live most inspiring uh, in the world. I mean, every brand today competes against every brand. May it be global, may it be local. So that is the reality. So we have to stack up with our work uh, and find through differentiation something uh, that can put go up there. Yeah? Well, that is far up, but it is always good to have uh, big ambitions. Um, yeah, if you take Havaianas also, yeah? it's a shoe, beach, beach shoe, yeah? competes against many other shoes, but I would say most inspiring in the world. There are others, I mean, in, in, uh, in Zurich, friends of mine are the Freitags. They do the Freitag bags. Anybody has a Freitag bag? You know? So that is an inspiring. It's very original. You know? And they, they nailed those, those, uh, those three things, I would say. Now, now the question is, what do we have in order to promote the, the higher level and to avoid? And it starts with what? What, what's the most important thing when we begin to work? What, what do we work on first? Big idea? Well, what, 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 what is uh, the layer, the, the start for? The briefing. The briefing, but what comes out of the briefing? Strategy. 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 Now, you give, give the strategy also a quality, uh, and you're looking for an innovative strategy. Um, when, when you work on that, uh, it's very helpful to do your research. I give you one example uh, to do creative research, let's say that. Um, um, coming back to the target description, and I said it's more demographic, and maybe in almost no case it's, it's really nailed in a psychographic way. The content also, what, what do we want to achieve? 
for instance, have one example that I like to use here, uh, and that is if we all together would uh, be a consortia of marketing people, uh, of milk producers, okay? Now, you have to write the brief that goes to the agency. What do you write about what should uh, be communicated uh, for milk and in order to increase consumption? What, what, you, what would you put in it? In the brief for milk? Uh, uh, health. Health? Uh, why so health? Grow. What? It helps to grow. Bones? bones. Why, why bones? Calcium. What? Calcium. Calcium. Yeah? Okay. I mean, for who? Children. Children. For older people. Older people. So we have the choice. It could be for older people. Yeah? So agency will figure out. That was done in half a minute. Uh, the marketing consortia usually takes three months. Yeah? So. But that was the brief an agency got in California. And then they did an intriguing research. They went into 120 households and had the agreement that those people in those households don't consume milk for 14 days. And they quickly ran into a frustration in those families because especially in California, when people uh, eat cookies and uh, a chocolate cake, uh, that only goes with milk. So they, they found an inherent drama, yeah, what, what milk delivers. So the strategy became milk always in the fridge, and the communication was then the drama, uh, uh, what happens if milk is not there. And, and you know the campaign got milk, and you can look at all those beautiful ads. But that is then uh, an innovative strategy that gets you up to set the new standard. So that's a science in itself, and you want to get your agency focusing on that and, and making uh, achievements. And what you said, freshness, uh, strategies, don't do it. you got to have ideas that are fresh all the time. Um, and the milk campaign did it. And then it was mentioned excellence in craft. And so these were now the criteria we used, and it was very interesting, because um, uh, often we sold fresh ideas, and we were very happy. And then we looked at the work three months later, and the ideas were gone. Where were those, those ideas? Yeah. So there was no excellence in craft. There was the team that, that uh, uh, came up with the ideas, they didn't pay attention to detail. And then we, we had uh, a, a line, a guiding line, once an idea is sold, the work begins. So, now, uh, in, what, what I will like to ask you now is to vote on the work you will see. So we will look at some uh, commercials. And there is no sound. Yeah, let's try the other one. Deutschland. Okay. Hmm. Très élégant, diese neuen Modelle. Hmm. Ich sehe sie schon in Mailand, in Barcelona und natürlich in Paris. In Paris wird man sie lieben. Was? Nur in Deutschland? Deutschland. Diese Modelle gehören nach Paris. Volkswagen. Das Auto. So Lagerfeld is looking at these cars yeah, and said they will love it in Paris. He lives in Paris. Yeah, but they say no, no, they are only in Germany. Oh my God, they should be there. Yeah. Uh, next end. Sparkling lipsticks look great. 
but how long before they lose their spark? I'm Graham Johnston, chief makeup artist on Anisa and Me. Now Max Factor's brought out Lipfinity Reflections. Sparkling lip colours in great new shades. Unlike other sparkling lipsticks, Lipfinity Reflections lasts for an amazing 10 hours. So you can eat, drink and your lips will sparkle all night long. New Lipfinity Reflections from Max Factor, the makeup of makeup artists. Just because 
really don't talk to you in that special way. Some fives, who gives it a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, a ten, a four, a three, a two, a one, this is a four point two. <laughs> German. <laughs> um, the second one was Max Factor, right? Max Factor. Um, who gives it a five, a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <laughs> a four, a three, a two, a one, or this is a two point nine. <laughs> that is okay. Um, now the next commercial was the Volkswagen Beta, yeah? Who gives it a five? A six? A seven? An eight? A nine? A ten? A four? Three, two, one. This is a seven point eight. Um, the next one was uh, Sony. Sony, uh, who gives it a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, a ten, a four, a three, a two, a one. That's interesting. Yeah. Six point seven. Um, <laughs> uh, the next one was the the Axe or Lynx, yeah. Lynx. Uh, who gives it a five? Five? A six? A seven? An eight? A nine? A ten? A four, a three, a two, a one. Uh, that is a seven point eight. Uh, then uh, the Disney, the Disney, uh, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, a ten, a four. Three, a two, a one. Uh, that was uh, seven point two. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, now let's let's uh, dig a little deeper. Yeah. I mean, the four point two. I mean, it's a kind of cliche. Yeah. I mean that. So that really worked out. What do you think? How many uh, views had this commercial on YouTube? But it has star power, so I don't know. Because it was it was bad. <laughs> I I think it it had views. Uh, it had uh, like sixty five thousand or so. Lagerfeld friends. Yeah. Uh, sixty five thousand. Um, 
What do you think the, the Veda had? How many views? Uh, four, four. Minus two. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I looked at it half a year ago and it was already around 40 and, and 4 million uh, regarding the making of. Or so I mean, that, that was 40 plus. So, uh, well deserved and, and, and I mean a real surprise. Now, uh, <coughs> let's look at four. I mean, it's a cliche. Uh, the, the max factor at 2.9 is three, not competitive. Yeah? I mean, just imagine, yeah? I mean, all this well-researched stuff, yeah? not competitive. We actually, uh, uh, we just had Jim Stengel uh, uh, at, the, at, at our seminar down there, Khan Creative Leaders Program. Uh, and I introduced him, uh, the man who changed the festival here. Because they came here 10 years ago with 30 people as Procter and & Gamble and were suddenly interested in um, uh, uh, learning from creativity, from emotions and so forth. And in the following year, they came here with uh, 50 people, including H. E. Lovely, yeah? the, the CEO. Their briefing changed. They said, win me the Grand Prix. Yeah? And, and Bob came home with, with uh, some of this kind of uh, uh, wealthy material. Uh, it was an Ariel, uh, I yeah. think, uh, and, and so forth. So I mean, that, that was interesting. Uh, then, uh, like, four, yeah, four years ago, uh, 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 he was, uh, Procter & Gamble was advertiser of the year, so, so. and they have changed the festival because when they came here suddenly companies looked at it. Usually we had 7,000 delegates, suddenly we have 11,000 delegates. And you know what was at the beginning? That we had Jim and 16 division managers in Chicago evaluating the work. Yeah? because they were suspicious about what we are doing here. And some people were crying, actually, yeah? uh, that they, uh, it's hard to, to work with that scale and to have achievements uh, more high up. So they were interested, they came to Chicago, they looked at the work, and that was the area where they were between, it was most of the stuff. And we, we had some Unilever work in, like the Axia and so on. Yeah. I mean, they were paid in their face. What do we do? Yeah. So that was one of the trigger, actually, also for, for that move. I mean, that is well observed. But also regarding strategy, I, they have something. Yeah. The, the, um, the visagists from Hollywood, yeah. the, uh, 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 how do you call those? Face makers, or so yeah. So they, they could have done uh, uh, much more with it. So that that was a property. Now, when when you think 7.8, I mean, you have, I mean, you certainly you're up here. Yeah? I mean, there there were some people that thought, hey, not so cool. Yeah? But when you think about innovative strategy, I mean, where is where is the innovative strategy here? Yeah, I mean, the, actually what they are demonstrating, you can do with any car. So sometimes it's a creative idea that is so powerful and so wonderful and so engaging yeah, uh, that, you know, you say, okay, our strategy is we are a car that functions well, we are a German car, does auto or what they do. And then, yeah, so you got to be also careful. Yeah? So in this case, you had to work on the strategy, but the assignment was have a special commercial at the Super Bowl and inspire the people. Yeah? So it is not an innovative strategy, but it's an inspiring strategy in that moment, right? So uh, Sony, what is so, uh, is there an innovative strategy? I mean, here's a color TV, yeah? uh, 50 years after inventing uh, color TV, they are saying, hey, colors. If you have a way to demonstrate something in an impressive way, go for it. Yeah? When, if it's not seen before, great demonstration. Yeah? Wow. And, and I don't know what triggered the idea to shoot up 70,000 uh, balls in San Francisco, but maybe it has something to do with pixels, but 
or it was a drama for pixels, uh, and it's maybe a million pixels or so, uh, but it's somewhat in, in, in this area to make color, visual, and, and the drama. And the interesting thing was uh, Juan, Juan Cabral, the guy who did this, uh, the same one as the gorilla had. Yeah. Uh, wrote it. Yeah, well, he, he directed wrote it. it. Yeah. He's an overachiever. <laughs> That's the point. So, uh, what, what, did he win the Grand Prix? I think he won gold, I don't remember. Gold. Gold, gold. gold. Yeah. yeah. That's all he said. Yeah. Yeah. I think about Perry Hodge. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a 10. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I, I remember when that came out. Huh. Yeah, we were just blown away. It was like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 But it was a sequence yeah. as well, because it was a large yeah, strategy yeah, where it had you know, kind of came, came, came down. down. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, it was a larger. Year. Yeah. It was the second year. The first year, the first year they came out, it was totally in the We were just doing that. Oh, yeah. my God. It's like we worked on Sony, and that, that really yeah. impressed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. It's, it's a very important point. It's interesting. They're not trying to spoofing. The other learning here is, in a way, uh, here with Volkswagen, you have a demo and a story, right? The demo and the story. I think those two things, yeah, if we can focus on those first, either a demo like in the, in the Sony or the combination. If you look at Bartle Bogle Haggard, for instance, and that's the next one. Uh, it's always a demo and a story. They, they always combine. If you do a demo, the client is already very positive because you demonstrate the ability of the product. And if you can uh, uh, put that into storytelling, yeah, then into fresh storytelling, a story you know, not so familiar with, yeah, but you know, if you have a cliche story, like they have, but if you reverse the whole thing, so even the cliche story uh, can, if handled in the right way, uh, can produce a lot. So what's also with those three commercials, or let's say with the four commercials really happen, is excellence in craft. I mean the detail work, uh, the editing and all this kind of stuff, the casting, uh, the moments the music, uh, created, the music, uh, I mean it's so well chosen. So, and, and in, in the case of Disney, dialogue, you know? Uh, it's very hard for us to handle dialogue, yeah? But this is an example where the dialogue is really engaging. Um, uh, the music is crappy, you know? There is no music in the, in the bedroom at the time. So the music tries to force, yeah? And takes down freshness. And it probably could have. Well, I mean, it's it's old ads also, you know. So I mean, they they have some uh, uh, tiring effect over time. But once when they appeared, so so we have to also honor that that it's you know, when they appeared. I mean, they were much higher. I mean, this was really uh, excellence what you could achieve. I have one more thing. And uh, uh, just to push uh, uh, crafting, what I said before was on, on print. What time produces a print ad is important. But in general, the one to see again factor is also very important. Yeah? We, we discussed with Procter & Gamble. Yeah? Uh, why don't you have a monitor to figure out how often do the people want to see it again? And they established one. In, in Geneva, and surprisingly, most of the work had a want to see again factor of, of zero. I mean, why would you want to do this kind of work? If you have an idea, I mean, the way you serve it up and the way you take it, you know, should be uh, uh, and more pleasing to the person that looks at it. Now, the next ad, I mean, you wrote the ad, yeah? you did the script, yeah? you did the art direction, yeah? you uh, uh, are the director, you did the casting, yeah? you've chosen the locations, yeah? you have uh, worked on the sound effects, yeah? you have worked on the music part, you are the editors, 
and just look from that perspective at that ad and see if you are all happy but you also if you're happy then you see what a great piece what kind of attention it needs and obviously you know the ad So now, here's the point. You put your criteria that you want to go for. That is very important. Uh, those were the criteria where we thought we can achieve something, and we actually called the, the whole thing seven plus and made the cut here and asked the agencies around the world to to tell us how many seven plus pieces do you want to produce during the year? Uh, at that time, uh, Moscow said one, yeah? so it's pretty difficult. Yeah? Uh, UK said 24, 24, seven plus pieces. Yeah? So we had every three months uh, uh, our global product committee where we looked at 1,000 to 1,200 uh, pieces of work from around the world, and it was a group Everyone was integrated and we had note takers, we talked about the work, we were a whole week uh, together and gave feedback, which is very important also for you, after three months, look back to the work you've done, evaluate it. Yeah? When you do new work, begin to evaluate what you're doing before you show it to client or other people. Yeah? So th this is a, a critical uh, thing. We started out uh, this seven plus thing with 141 seven plus pieces. And we also began, uh, there's a correlation of that, of that line, of, of, of those criteria to this festival. We did not send anything here that was, be, uh, that was below a seven plus. Yeah? So, and we got out of the pieces we sent here, a nice portion and, and came home with 15 lines or so. Later we, we had some more. So after five years, we had over 365 seven plus, so every day one, if you will. Yeah? And in this period of time, 727 agencies of ours, including Poland, yeah, were named agency of the year in their country. 27, and this award, including the US, Global Agency of the Year by Ad Age, uh, uh, in, in, in addition, uh, most awarded agency uh, in the gun report. Uh, so, and you get this uh, um, uh, for business results and for, for, for work that is discussed in the, in the local community. So both, both things. Uh, so that, that's a healthy measurement. Uh, but, you know, uh, do you think there were any problems with it? I mean, I mentioned uh, the Procter & Gamble thing. People were crying, said, I, I cannot achieve this. Yeah. I tell you, this was very controversial, the whole system. And in the United States, yeah, they said, come on. Yeah. I mean, we know what good work is. Yeah. So, and 
in those global product committee meetings, you know, it was hard to get them in and present their work and we talked about it. So I leading quality, you know, you have to step out of your way and sometimes to goof up yeah, and to win over the people. So I did something, uh, I mean, Bob is a master in, in presentation, yeah, and I actually was really interested to have you at a certain point of time come to Berlin and uh, give us uh, a lecture about how to present something uh, in, a, in a fresh way. So I did this, what you see in a minute, and um, used uh, the audience of 2,500 Burnett people uh, during the breakfast. They all come together <laughs> in order to run that thing here. So, and that ends the presentation. And that now when you think of it, there's something missing. We, the Leo Burnett Company, we don't have a song. <laughs> now I will offer you a song and you will have the lyrics on the screen. Because I expect you're going to learn the lyrics, so when we stand at the elevator banks, we can share that song. When we ride up the elevator, we can share the song. And when we walk the stairway, we can share the song. Now, what should the song be about? Obviously, about the work. And I focused on the Global Product Committee, where we really like to drive the quality up from a three, four, five, six, above a seven, and beyond. So that is what the song will be about. <laughs> there are some boards on the wall, and we can't sell them all, because we're climbing a stairway to sell. <laughs> when we get there we'll know we'll win gold every show and much as we will kick at the Clio yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we're climbing the stairway to sell we must give at Saigon, as was copied too long. Cause you know words don't play in Sweden. <laughs> and some ads we must ban, if they don't scream out can. After all, that's where I get my son. <laughs> And it makes me wonder Yeah, it really makes me wonder There is a feeling I get When our goals have been met And my nipples are stiff and surprised <laughs> Our ideas must be grand And our thoughts so well planned that good be comes back in for mercy. <laughs> so take these words to be true. These words I say to you, even though I still sing with an accent. <laughs> you must prepare to be great, to accept that long due faith. Cause we're climbing a stairway to seven plus.
No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Michael, thank you very much. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's great, man. Thanks for having me here. Good luck.